Why don't we give a big warm welcome to Dr. Michael Greger! Surely if there was some safe, simple, side effect free solution to the obesity epidemic, we would know about it by now, right? I'm not so sure. It may take up to 17 years before research findings make it into day-to-day -day clinical practice. To take one example that was particularly poignant for my family, heart disease. You know, decades ago, Dr. Dean Ornish and colleagues published evidence in one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world that our leading cause of death could be reversed with diet and lifestyle changes alone, yet hardly anything changed. Even now, hundreds of thousands of Americans continue to needlessly die from what we learned decades ago was a reversible disease. In fact, I'd seen it with my own eyes. My grandmother was cured of her end-stage heart disease by one of Dean's predecessors, Nathan Pritikin, using similar methods. So if effectively the cure to our number one killer of men and women could get lost down some rabbit hole and ignored what else might there be in the medical literature that could help my patients but just didn't have a you know, corporate budget driving its promotion. Well, I made it my life's mission to find out. That's why I became a doctor in the first place and why I started my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, certainly non-commercial, not selling anything, just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother. New videos and articles nearly every day on the latest in evidence-based nutrition. What a concept. Okay, so what does the science show is the best way to lose weight? If you want testimonials and before and after pictures, you have come to the wrong place. I'm not interested in anecdotes. I'm interested in the evidence. When it comes to making decisions as life and death important as the health and well-being of yourself and your family, there's really only one question. What does the best available balance of evidence show right now? The problem is that even just sticking to the peer-reviewed medical literature is not enough, as false and scientifically misleading, unsupported beliefs about obesity are pervasive, even in scientific journals. The only way to get at the truth, though, then, is to dive deep into the primary literature and read all the original studies themselves, but who's got time for that? There are more than a half a million scientific papers on obesity, with 100 new ones published every day. Even researchers in the field might not be able to keep track beyond their narrow domain. But that's what we do at Nutrition Facts. We comb through tens of thousands of studies a year, so you don't have to. Very nice. And indeed, we uncovered a treasure trove of buried data, like uh, today I'll cover simple spices. Uh, for example, proven and randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trials to accelerate weight loss for pennies a day, but with so little profit potential, it's no wonder these studies never saw the light of day. The only profiting I care about, though, is your health. That's why 100% of all the proceeds I receive from all my books and DVDs and speaking engagements are all donated to charity. I just want to do for your family what Pritikin did for my family. But wait, isn't weight loss just about eating less and moving more. I mean, isn't a calorie a calorie? That's what the food industry wants you to think. 
The notion that a calorie from one source is just as fattening as any other is a trope broadcast by the food industry as a way to absolve itself of culpability. Coca-Cola itself even put an ad out there emphasizing this one simple common sense fact. As the current and past chairs of the Harvard's nutrition department put it, this central argument from industry is that the overconsumption of calories from carrots would be no different than the overconsumption of calories from soda. If a calorie is just a calorie, why does it matter what we put in our mouths? Well, let's explore that example of carrots versus Coca-Cola. It's true that in a tightly controlled laboratory setting, 240 calories of carrots, 10 carrots, would have the same effect on calorie balance than the 240 calories in a bottle of Coke, but this comparison falls flat on its face out in the real world. Right? You could chug those liquid candy calories in less than a minute, but eating 240 calories of carrots would take you more than two and a half hours of sustained constant chewing. <laughs> Not only would your jaw get sore, but 240 calories of carrots is like five cups. You might not even be able to fit them all in. Right? Our stomach is only so big. Once we fill it up, stretch receptors in our stomach wall tell us when we've had enough. But different foods have different amounts of calories per stomachful. Right? Some foods have more calories per cup, per pound, per mouthful than others. This is the concept of calorie density. Right? The number of calories in a given amount of food. Uh, three pounds is about what the average American eats in a day. As you can see, for example, oil has a high calorie density, meaning a high calorie concentration, lots of calories. Uh, um, kind of packed into a small space. So drizzling just a tablespoon of oil onto a dish adds over 100 calories. For those same calories, you could have instead eaten about two cups of blackberries, for example, a, a food with a low calorie density. So these two meals have the same number of calories. Uh, you could swig down that spoonful of oil, not even feel anything in your stomach, but you know, eating a couple cups of berries uh, could start to fill you up. Right? That's why, yes, biochemically a calorie is a calorie, but eating the same amount of calories in different foods can have different effects. The average human stomach can expand to fit about four cups of food, so a single stomach full of Strawberry ice cream, for example, could max out our caloric intake for the entire day. For those same 2,000 calories, to get those same 2,000 calories from strawberries themselves, you'd have to eat 44 cups of berries, right? That's 11 stomachfuls. I mean, as delicious as berries are, I don't know if I could fill my stomach to bursting 11 times a day, right? So some foods are just impossible to overeat. They're so low in calorie density, right? You just physically couldn't eat enough to even maintain your weight.